Welcome to Reality Creative Video. I'm Hermes. I got an update on Colloidal Platinum here. Now, if you saw my community forum post about the breakthrough that I had with, with Colloidal Platinum, I used my mystical wizard powers to get extra help because I just could not crack the inconsistency with why sometimes it would cook and sometimes it wouldn't. And so I sought a higher power. And um, in that math verse, if you haven't seen the video on the math verse, you can, uh, I'll link to it in the description. You can watch that video. But in the math verse, when I visited there, there I talked to the non-physical alchemist and they told me, showed me anyway, the error of my ways. Let's take this one step at a time. I was current locking the process at the gold rate, which is about 100, about 250 milliamps. Gold cooks at about 250 milliamps. Gold, uh, I don't know where is it? Gold and platinum, where are they on the here? Um, anyway, they're on here somewhere. Gold and platinum are right next to each other. There they are, right here. 78, 79. Gold and platinum are right next to each other on the periodic chart. So I figured, well, how different could they possibly be, right? So uh, that was mistake number one I made. And uh, there was a lot of mistakes along the way. A lot, a lot, they are very different sorts of metal, even though they're right next to each other. Uh, they require different environments to uh, cook. Um, you need a pH meter. Because the pH has to be specific, though I don't have the pH nailed down. I, I really would like to lose the, the pH as being a requirement, uh, but we'll see. I'm still working on that. Anyway, the big factor I had was every time I'd cook three or four batches and only one batch would get any any kind of a, amount of co significant amount of colloidal in there. It was driving me bat crazy. So, hey, when I can't find an earthly answer, I try and go get it someplace else. I'm a wizard. I can do these things. Why not avail myself of this? So that's what I did. Uh, I went there. I talked to the alchemist, the non-physical alchemist, and they told me an interesting thing. They said, did you know that the gold molecule, uh, the platinum molecule, is 10, to uh, 10 times more resistive than the gold molecule? Well, my jaw kind of went open uh, with that one. And um, what that means is, is that um, it takes 10 times the amount of electrons to blast the, the metal free of this rod than it does gold. So I was using one-tenth of the amount of current necessary, which is why sometimes it worked and sometimes it didn't work. So... I upped the current 10 times to 2,500 milliamps. And I cooked this batch here, number 37. You'll notice it says topical. It says topical because in order to get the current up that high, I had to put so much washing soda in there that you can't actually drink this stuff. <laughs> so... Uh, but it, it, it showed me that I freed up my problem. I got maybe 10 to 15 parts per million in this thing uh, when I was only able to get micro, uh, micro amounts through my amber colored stuff. And there's more. Uh, we, you know, we have clear and amber, and that, that gets complicated too. But let's, let's just go with the current problem right now. So... I'm working that particular part out. So now, as you can see, we're I'm at 15 hours. This is actually this is actually number 40. This is 38, okay, which is uh, going to be similar to this thing over here, which came out decent. Okay, and number 39 was a total failure uh, because of some because of the. Uh, platinum dioxide that happened to be mounted up on the the rod that's another problem i'm gonna have to get into with with you guys too with uh, the buildup of platinum dioxide so i'm trying to fix that problem 
Uh, the problem is the higher the current you use, the faster the platinum dioxide uh, gets onto the rod. And once the platinum dioxide fills up on the entire rod, it no longer will uh, create any colloidals. It becomes like an armor around the rod, which then has to be stripped out. And there is a process for stripping that out that I have kind of worked out. So I'm trying to not have the colloidal, the platinum dioxide be a problem so that it doesn't add an extra step every time you got to co cook a colloidal. But anyway, it, these are things I still have left to work out. So it takes a long time to cook these colloidals. That the 2500 milliamp range, I was burning it about a one milligram an hour. At the 1500, I've reduced it to 1500 milliamps, and that's probably a half a milligram an hour. So right now we're at 15 hours. I, it's not exactly, you know, uh, this is probably a three or four milligram solution here, which equates to about uh, a 10 parts per million uh, solution. So, uh, we actually have a success on on that. We're getting colloidals in there, which is great. I have just I have things I have to work on. It's like it rec right now I'm using a high pH to cook the colloidal. Everything I read online says that platinum needs a high pH environment, which means you need washing soda. Or baking soda. I don't know if it's going to work with baking soda. I know it works with washing soda. It just adds a little logistics to it. The, the pH drops on its own um, over time. But in the end, like this batch here, I had to add a little bit of malic acid to drop the pH from 9 to 7.2 to make it a little, you know, so you, the pH wasn't so high on that. So there's little logistics, little things that have to be worked out with the process. Now, I'm, I'm this thing I want to, it's supposed to have a very light uh, grayish, brownish tint to it. And I'm hoping I can get uh, enough colloidals in here to start to give me that grayish, lightish tint. It just about has it now. I want it to get deepen it a little bit more, so I'm cooking this a little longer. Now, I know if you've seen the other post, you've seen this colloidal here, with his, which has the coloring on it. And as I've, I've kind of told you about, that is because I used absorbic acid as a reducing agent. In this, I'm using Manuka honey as a reducing agent, and it, that's clear. The colloidal, uh, the as ascorbic acid caramelize caramelizes at anything over 60 degrees C, and we are cooking this right now at 70 degrees C. So we're using ascorbic acid. We will always get this light kind of color to it. Uh, this is kind of like a little bit more sexier than this light uh, light grayish thing that we got going on here. And to be perfectly honest, I, I haven't gotten around to testing the higher current with absorbic acid as a reducing agent instead of the honey. Uh, it, this may wind up being the better way to go, but I'm not sure yet. These are, these are just all the, the, the platinum is so more, much more complex than just, you know, silver, put in two rods, put the water in there, cook it for 45 minutes, you got your silver. This is 15 hours a very long painstakingly constantly adding the water in there because it boils away because we're looking at the 70 degrees C and that, that's without any heat okay that heat is being generated by the current going through here uh, I, even though you see that I have my rig here my heat rig here and I have it set for 71 this 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 is not even on I'm get I'm generating this 70 degrees C just from the current flowing from from the one rod to the other. Now the things I did discover is I'm using a copper anode instead of two platinum a platinum cathode and a platinum anode. The copper anode I'm able to deliver a little higher current and is a little bit more stable and it really bashes this uh, platinum rod with. Uh, a lot of electrons so that we can get this material off of here sooner. But I mean, right now it stands as a very long 
kind of process in order to get your colloidal platinum. Now, with that said, you know, I do, I'm not entirely sure we even need to cook platinum to anywhere over 10 parts per million. I even think one or two parts per million. Now, this stuff here is it less than, it's probably one parts per million or even less. And this is a potent stuff that I've been using. This is the original stuff that I cooked. And I have to say, I mean... What I have found, this is like a tremendous pain reliever, an anti-inflammatory, and it makes you feel great. At least that's the main things that I see that this thing has. And we're talking, this little bottle is just a tiny, you know, amount of the parts per million. Now, the stuff I'm cooking here, this, like I said, is, a t is at least a 10 parts per million solution. This is this one here is almost a 10 parts per million solution. Uh, that's going to be a lot more potent. Whether you need that potency, I don't know, because as it is with colloidals, your body will will get rid of what it doesn't need. So what if you only need, with platinum, what if you only need a one parts per million solution? Why would you want to drink a 10 parts per million solution and waste all that platinum being platinum is now twice as expensive as gold? So there's that to consider when you're cooking your platinum. I mean, I'm trying to cook this to 10 or 12 or 15 parts per million just so I can get a little bit of a color change in here. But do we really need to cook it that far? So that's something that you're only going to be able to tell on your own as you cook your own platinum and you cook it to whatever parts per million you want. Now, of course, you can cook your platinum to a higher parts per million and mix it down. And you know what? That may be something that I may wind up doing with this stuff. So uh, like I said, I haven't decided. I mean, I like the vitamin C in here. Uh, it's kind of nice. And the caramelization gives this all a really nice flavor to it. So for my own personal needs, I may actually switch to um, absorbic acid as a reducing agent instead of the Manuka honey. But this is working right now, so I'm trying to replicate this process for you guys so that I can get a start to finish up there for all of you eager people that want to cook platinum yourself safely. Now, my, if, my re... re uh, recent post that came before this one at somewhat is about power supplies constant voltage constant current power supplies i'm going to you should review that video before you attempt to cook colloidal platinum like i said i got to get around to the start and finish video for it as soon as i can nail this process down a little bit more we're getting close but you're going to need a good power supply you know those those bricks are not going to work with this. Uh, not at all. You need to current lock this at 1,500 milliamps. I'm hoping I can maybe drop the milliamps down to 700 milliamps, but then that may change the time. It may take 30 hours to cook instead of 15. I don't know. I have to experiment with that as well. But I know 1,500 milliamps gets us to about 10 parts per million in 15 hours. All right. And like I said, you have to constantly add water to it because it's it's cooking at a boil, so or just under a boil. So you have to constantly watch this thing and add, keep adding the fluid to it as it dries up. Otherwise, you'll have nothing left in the bottom here, and you're not going to have any colloidals. So there are there are considerations with this colloidal and the the baking soda or washing soda. Uh, I'd like to figure out it, how much do we really need on the baking soda or the washing soda. I'd like to cut down on that as well. Oh, by the way, this is the picture of what that looks like. Just took it over there, and I will show you it over here. It is loaded with stuff, and that's that's like at a 10 parts per million uh, thing, and it is, is absolutely loaded with stuff. And even this stuff um, is also loaded as well. So... I find platinum is a pretty dense metal and it looks very distinctly different on the video microscope from other metals. All right, so fingers crossed. As you can see, we're getting a nice uh, little bit of a dark grayish color here at 15 hours. I'm going to let this cook for a few more hours and see how much I can get off this. The problem is, is that as this uh, bar oxidizes, it 
gets harder and harder to get the platinum off of there. And then that's a problem too when you go to cook it the next time. And I'm hoping to have those little details kind of worked out for you uh, to make this process easier for you. I'm Hermes. This is Reality Creative Video, and I will talk to you again soon.